Hello everyone. Today our topic in operating system course is operations on processes. The execution of a process is a complex activity. It involves various operations. Following are the operations that are performed while execution of a process. Process creation, process scheduling or dispatching, process preemption, process blocking, and the process termination. First, process creation. Processes need to be created in the system for different operations. This can be done by the following events. User request for a process creation, system initialization, execution of a process creation system call by a running process, batch up initialization. Process creation is the initial step of process execution activity. The process creation is very common in running computer system because corresponding to every task that is performed, there is a process associated with it. For example, a user process is created every time a user logs on to a computer system or when an application such as Excel is initiated or when a document is printed. Most operating systems identify processes according to a unique process identifier or process ID, which is usually an integer number. A process may be created by another process using fork. The creating process is called the parent process and the created process is the child process. A child process can have only one parent, but a parent process may have many children. This diagram demonstrates process creation using fork. According to this scenario, the parent process waits until the child terminates. However, it's possible that the parent and the child process run at the same time. When a process creates a new process, there are two possibilities for execution. According to the past, the parent continues to execute concurrently with its children and according to the second, the parent waits until some or all of its children have terminated. There are also two address space possibilities for the new process. The child process is a duplicate of the parent process. It has the same program and data as the parent. And the second, the child process has a new program loaded into it. And regarding resources, in general, when a child process is created, it will need resources. A child process may be able to obtain its resources directly from the operating system, or it may be restricted to the parent's resources. The parent may have to partition its resources among its children, or it may be able to share some resources among several of its children. Next, the process scheduling or dispatching operation. The event or activity in which the state of the process is changed from ready to running is called dispatching. It means that the operating system posts the process from ready state into running state. Dispatching is done by the operating system when the resources are pre or the process has higher priority than the ongoing process. The next operation is the process preemption. An interrupt mechanism is used in preemption that suspends the process executing currently and the next process to execute is determined by the short-term scheduler. The preemption makes sure that all processes get some CPU time for execution. The next operation is the process blocking. The process is blocked if it's waiting for some event to occur. This event may be I.O. operation. After the event is complete, the process again goes back 
to the ready state. The next operation is process termination. After the process has completed the execution of its last instruction, it is terminated. The resources held by the process are released after it is terminated. A child process can be terminated by its parent process if its task is no longer relevant. The child process sends its status information to the parent process before it terminate. Also, when a parent process is terminated, the child processes are terminated as well as the child processes cannot run if the parent processes are terminated. Some systems do not allow a child to exit if its parent has terminated. In such systems, if a process terminates, either normally or abnormally, then all its children must also be terminated. And this is referred to as cascading termination, and it's normally initiated by the operating system. After termination, all the resources of the process, such as memory, I.O. buffer, open files, and others, are deallocated by the operating system. For today, that's all. Thank you.